Folks, take a look at this video right here. It says, when that TikTok check hit, look at Buddy right here. We are in prison, flexing with the icy white honey buns, and take a look at this guy. Yeah, man, I ain't never, I ain't never seen no wild ass shit like this. It's a, it's a totally different world these days. I first began talking about this guy with the username Love Galore uh, last week on a live stream that I did here, kicking the bobo. If you guys don't check that out, I highly encourage you to do so. That shit is lit. God, I, I, I sound as old as I look, I'm sure. But anyways, like I said, I first started talking about this guy in a live stream and talking about the fact that this is a guy who's currently in prison right now, for any of you who don't know, currently in prison right now filming TikTok videos and has amassed a following of almost 1 million followers. By the time you're seeing this video, it's very likely that this guy does have over 1 million followers on TikTok. Now, though the amount of followers that you have doesn't necessarily necessarily equate to dollars. Well, in this particular case, it probably does because this dude is absolutely bubbling right now on the internet for the fact that he does a lot of TikTok dance type videos from inside of a damn prison. And I was absolutely blown away by that the first time that I ran across this guy thinking to myself, you know, Prison certainly is a lot different from when I was in there. I've harped on that point quite a bit here on After Prison Show, but it's absolutely true. I mean, take this guy, for example, putting his whole face out there, having a following of almost a million people on TikTok, knowing damn good and well the staff knows exactly who you are and exactly what you're doing. I didn't know much about this guy when I first began talking about him, but one of the biggest questions that came to mind to me personally and that I was sharing about on the live stream that we did was who exactly is this guy and what is he locked up for? Ironically, since doing the live stream talking about, you know, who is this guy or questioning that, I would run across a lot more information and people actually have found this dude out who exactly he is, what exactly he's locked up for. And it may be a bit alarming to some. We're going to talk about all of that here today, but one thing that I want you to keep in mind throughout the course of this video is here lies a man in prison right now with a following of almost a million people on TikTok and his videos are getting millions of views. Like I said, those followers may not amount to dollar signs, but those millions of views per video, oh, they most certainly do. The number one question that I posed when I first introduced this guy was, what is it like to be in prison as an influencer? And more importantly, what is it like to be in prison making something probably like six figures while serving time? I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna lie. I'm a little salty about that. I think to myself, if I had access to a cell phone, would I have been up there jigging and jiving? I don't even really know how to dance, but I'd have figured it out for six figures. I'd have been selling feet pics. I've been doing whatever. Shit, Joe would have been. Hey, Joe would have been pioneering. I'd have started an OnlyFans before there was an OnlyFans. Only inmates. Ooh, yeah. And real quick, let's look at this first video that I wanted to share with you guys again. I mean, look at the look in this guy's eyes. The flex is real. When that TikTok check hit, you know buddy ain't lying right there. Them little zoom zooms and wham whams ain't meaning shit to the fact. Stickman could probably buy him a house from a prison cell. Folks, let me go ahead and introduce you to Corey Anderson Love. Now, all credit goes to these TikTok internet sleuths who have found all of this out. Literally, all I had to do was run across their video and bada bing, bada boom, all of this information is out there. Now, the one thing that I will say is, again, when we were talking about this guy on this live stream, I tried to do a little bit of internet investigating myself. Noticing what style prison uniform this guy was wearing, I tried to investigate and figure out where he was locked up at, and I came to the conclusion that I figured he was probably down in Georgia, at first thinking maybe South Carolina or Alabama. I was dead wrong in regards to that, but Georgia. His uniform matched Georgia. That was my final answer. I had no more information. I would be made to know from this information I'm getting ready to share with you 
that I was actually right about that. So I, I, I feel like feel like I uncovered something on my own. But again, Corey Anderson Love, nickname Mudda Mudda Kabur. I'm probably mispronouncing that, and forgive me for doing so. Uh, locked up in the state of Georgia. Current sentences are for voluntary manslaughter, aggravated assault, gang participation. This guy sounds like, oh, forgive me. I'm not even going to, look, people make mistakes, okay? Voluntary manslaughter, it's not necessarily involuntary manslaughter where it doesn't, where it means you didn't mean to kill a person. Voluntary manslaughter means that you meant to kill somebody, but you know, there were some stipulating factors that kind of make it a little bit better than first degree murder. So good on him for at least having that. He got 20 years for that, 20 years for the second charge, 20 years for the third charge. And here's how it went down, folks. At 17 years old, they say that this guy was accused of malice murder, felony murder, aggravated assault, and three counts of participating in criminal street gang activity in connection with a December 8th murder of an 18-year-old man. Uh, They said that love galore and the victim were both co-workers at a McDonald's. And according to authorities, Love walked into the restaurant just before 7.30 p.m. on December 8th and shot Chambers and fled on foot. How you get a, a voluntary manslaughter charge for that? Because again, there has to be some kind of a justification or maybe you just went ahead and pled guilty and they decided, hey, look, plead guilty, make this easier for us. And we'll just go ahead and give you voluntary manslaughter. It sounds a lot better than first degree murder and you'll still get 20 20 years. But it's really crazy to think that this dude was working at Mickey D's, committed an M1, and now he's making M's from a prison cell with a 20 plus year prison sentence. Uh, That's insane to me. Now, I wanna throw this little footnote in there as well. When I ran across this video and there was another video just like this, basically putting all of this guy's information out there, I went into the comment section and there were a lot of people defending this dude saying, hey, wait, he's already uh, addressed what he was locked up for and good for him for getting in front of that because you're going to have to. The internet will find you out. But there were also some women in there who were saying, no, you're wrong about this. He told me he gets out next year. And man, the internet was in laughing emojis. Yeah, man, the internet was uh, busting a gut, to say the least. Uh, Trying to tell these women, that's what they all say. Uh, They say the victim was treated at the scene and then transported to an area hospital where he was pronounced dead shortly after. The following day, Love turned himself in, so that probably helped him to get that voluntary manslaughter charge. He turned himself in. He was arrested. The teens were apparently involved in a conflict over Love's missing wallet and cell phone. Damn, man, you killed a dude over a wallet and cell phone. You know, I just saw a video on Twitter, which is crazy. A dude literally got stretched out in a apartment complex parking lot in broad daylight with an AK over a, a stolen phone. And dude got apprehended within the hour who did that. Life over, all behind a phone. But who knows, maybe you could go to prison and start you a TikTok. I'm not trying to sound like a hater. Okay, I'm not trying to sound salty about this. I'm just, I'm blown away by this. You know, let's throw a little devil's advocacy into this as well. Is this, you know, is this um, punishment for your crime? You know, obviously you have to sit your ass down for two decades. But to think about the fact that, and, and you know what, maybe it is. But you're making the most of your time. There, this also brings to question profiting from your crime. You know, in the federal system, you're not allowed to do that. You're not allowed to write a book and get royalties from that. You're not allowed to be a part of a movie and get any kind of compensation for that. The federal system is pretty strict, as far as I can remember, about profiting from your crime. But this guy's locked up down in Georgia. And from what I've been seeing as of late, they don't give a damn what you're doing down there. Cell phones, TikToks, it don't matter. Firebombing the stairwells in an effort to make you a prison burrito, it don't matter. Like, we're not getting paid enough to care. It's like loss prevention at a Target. I'm not willing to die for this. Kind of makes sense. You know, we've, we're living in a day and age where 
You, you really get what you pay for. Is that hourly wage that a guard is getting paid worth worth all that? It used to be when I was locked up, they'd lock your ass up for anything. It doesn't really seem the same these days. Yeah, I'm a little mad about that. Love was indicted by a Clayton County grand jury. Clayton County is in Georgia. Uh, during the February term, the jury charged that Love is associated with a criminal street gang known as the Rolling Sixties, a subset of a well-known street gang uh, the Crips, the murder the grand jury charged was fueled by gang violence. Uh, Love pled guilty to vi- voluntary manslaughter, say less. Like I said, I thought it could be because of the fact that he turned himself in. You turned yourself in, look, we're just going to go for the, the worst of the charges. And those were uh, the murder charge, the gang participation, and the aggravated assault. Which is crazy. How do you get an aggravated assault when you killed somebody? You you would you you ain't do nothing. You shot him. They say Love pled guilty to voluntary manslaughter, aggravated assault, and one count of gang activity in Clayton County Superior Court on June the 19th. Under a negotiated plea, he was sentenced to 40 years with the first 25 years to be served in prison and the remainder on probation. They said that this happened when Dude was 17. Uh, you know, how old is he now? Is he at the most 30? I don't know. He looks pretty young, but then again, prison can preserve you. Maybe he is at the end of that 25-year sentence, uh, but there ain't no way. There ain't no way. Stickman still got a rack of time left to serve. Uh, I don't know if they have parole in Georgia and if this guy is eligible for it, but from what they mentioned, saying that he has to serve the first 25 years before he can serve the, the second half on probation, Pretty much tells me he's probably not eligible for parole. Prosecutors agreed to dismiss the felony murder charge and two of the gang activity counts. During the duration of his probation, Love is not allowed to contact any members of the victim's family or participate in any street gang. And again, here's this young man just jigging and jiving up in a prison cell. Look at that. Uh, You think he's affiliated up in there? You probably have to be, right? Wild ass shit. I, I got to admit this though, you know, good on this dude for trying to make the most of his time. He's certainly going to come home with a rack of money, possibly millions, uh, if his TikTok and social media influencer career continues to blossom the way that it is. Uh, man, there's no telling. The sky's the limit where this guy could take this, and hopefully he's able to do something positive from this. You know, what I would like to see of this dude is him to really advocate for, hey, uh, you know, get up out them streets. Don't join no gangs, but you can't do that because you're in prison right now, and you probably, you probably got to be about that shit up in there. You know, you can't be making no videos trying to advocate for don't do it because right now you're still doing it. So what can you do? You can dance. Damn right you can. Like a stripper on the stage for, I mean, tens of thousands, maybe even hundreds of thousands of dollars. Damn right. What would you do for that type of money? And it's crazy to just think of the people in the background who watch this dude do this. You know, does this put a target on this guy's head? Uh, Or is he in there running shit? If you got the money, you got the power in prison. But what if you also have the money and the respect? And I'm not just talking about the respect of an institution. I'm talking about the respect of TikTok followers and social media influence. How far can that get you in prison? Folks, I'd be curious to know what you guys think of all of this. Hey, I just wanted to share about this guy. Look, no hate and no discredit to him. I wish him nothing but success. And hopefully he's able to turn over a new leaf, so to say, and stand a good chance of making it when he is released. Certainly with the fact that a financial burden may be one thing that's taken off the plate of this guy when he does come home. Hey, look, that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did so, please leave a like and a comment letting me know exactly what you thought about this. And as always, until next time, enjoy life, the free world. Never take a moment for granted, and make the most of every day. Peace!